Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we are going to talk about product recalls which is a very important uh, uh, issue in uh, supply chain risk management. So, we have uh, seen uh, uh, the supply chain risk how uh, several uh, risks uh, happen and uh, how to how they can be mitigated, but particularly in some issues such as uh, food processed food particularly pet foods and also in toys and children's toys there is uh, uh, whenever the uh, there is some problem with uh, the products they have to be recalled because uh, they are usually stored in the house and they may be used at a later point in time. So, it is imp very important to <coughs> inform the public uh, particularly people who have purchased it and also recall them. Uh, uh, wherever they are, whether in the house, they are in the warehouse and so on. One of the issues uh, that faced in 2007 for a company called Mattel. Uh, Mattel is a toy company which is world's number one uh, which does Barbie dolls and others. Uh, is uh, based out of United States and it outsources uh, a lot of its toy production to, uh, to China. <coughs> It has a lot of employees like 200 employees in uh, in Hong Kong uh, to basically uh, oversee uh, the management of the outsourcing arrangements with the various players in China. But uh, still in 2007 there was uh, uh, the test to recall and there was a lot of problems for uh, uh, metal. So, Taking metals case, let us look at uh, how product recalls uh, can be handled uh, in a supply chain risk management setting. Well, toys recalls happen, the, the recalls happen uh, in other uh, this one like uh, there were cell phone batteries exploding, there were uh, auto uh, components uh, misbehaving and so on. So, there, there were uh, recalls by Toyota, recalls by Nokia and other other companies. So, this uh, product recalls uh, is an important issue and it has been raising because after the outsourcing. So, we will first look at what is the ecosystem of Mekel. In fact, we are going to uh, map the ecosystem and then look at product recalls and uh, what is the risk management in outsourced manufacturing. Now, here uh, we are outsourcing products which are of low value. In other words, they are not like TVs or they are not like cell phones which cost hundreds of dollars. These are basically uh, a Barbie doll may cost at the most 10 dollars. So, and also pet foods and others which are cheap items. But they are all outsourced uh, that is because of uh, low cost uh, um, uh, resource availability in countries like China, India and so on. So, that uh, how do you do the risk management in those uh, areas uh, and then we will conclude this lecture. <coughs> so, in low cost product supply chains uh, such as food, toys and many others, the lower tire suppliers may adulterate, contaminate use banned materials which are cheaper options etcetera either being unaware of the dangers or deliberately to lower costs. Now, for example, one of the items that they they use is for example, they adulterate the beef with the horse meat, they uh, contaminate uh, this because of lack of uh, hygiene uh, and stored facilities. So, they store uh, they store food outside uh, without in, in non temperature uh, uh, temperature environments and they use lead paint which is cheaper uh, instead of uh, uh, instead of leadless paint. So, 
because of that because these are all uh, low cost and they think nothing is going to happen. So, how do lead players? In other words, players who are basically outsourcing the so called manufacturing of these low cost items to China, India and so on in long dispersed supply chains ensure that above issues do not occur. Do you suggest inspections? Is it communications or supply chain visibility? The Samex way that we have seen in Samex, Samex way it, it basically deals with all the suppliers and so on, collaboration and what else? I mean, do you want to hear, uh, create uh, a procurement platform where all the materials required for all the suppliers, all the tires is procured under contract by the metal itself. So, the, the point here is that because of the low cost of the product and people do not want to spend more time and use uh, you know sophisticated IT platforms and so on. So, the issue is in such cases what is the governance? How are you going to ensure that the products that are produced are safe? particularly to the children, to the animals who cannot say once they get sick, they cannot even tell you that they are sick. So, that is the basic learning in this particular case. Let us look at uh, Mucho, the company profile of metal. It started in 1945, uh, it has gone to become world's largest toy company. And metal is responsible for many of today's uh, 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 toys uh, like Barbie, uh, Tickle Me, Elmo, and Hot Wheels, and so on. So, metal sold products under license based characters from uh, Sesame Street, Barney, Walt, Walt, Walt Disney, Warner Brother movies, and Harry Potter books. So, you can see that uh, the kind of uh, uh, brand uh, based product brand products that uh, metal says. It is it's basically a top uh, company in the world. In 2006 sales exceeded 5 billion and in 2007 uh, 6 billion dollars. And most of metal toy manufacturing is done through outsourcing mainly in China and about 65 percent of the toys are done in China. And in 2007 at the time of product recalls metal was the world's largest toy maker. So, in 2007 July is the time when uh, the product recall first recall was made and because there were some problems we will look through those. So, if you look at what is the metal ecosystem? If the ecosystem consists of parents because it is the parents who buy the toys, children, retailers, manufacturers, suppliers and raw material suppliers, you know suppliers and supplier suppliers, quality control at all uh, at all the stakeholders, R and D at metal, at suppliers, governments, employees in China, Hong Kong and USA, media and other financial institutions. So, you can see the, the stakeholders who are who are there in this not only it is the metal, metal employees is the all the tier, uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 uh, employees and there of course, there are lots of financial institutions and media. Media takes a central role whenever there is a problem with this very rightly so. Uh, because uh, once there is the children get infected or uh, they die because of uh, the problems associated with the with the dolls, then of course the media gets into act. And so basically, one has to look at uh, all the stakeholders. Let's map the supply chain. What is the metal ecosystem? So the metal service chain is. Uh, a design and prototyping that is the first this done at metal and manufacturing which is outsourced and then quality control at all stages of manufacturing. So, how good it is 
and distribution and retail. Now, the distribution and retail, retailers are big ones like Walmart, uh, Tesco and others. So, these are all, they, they basically cost control everything. And there are of course, lot of competitors for metal. So, the product recalls could be product design troubles, there could be uh, problems with the manufacturing like lead or the products are, are not done non well and of course, this quality control for any kind of materials that are used which basically come out or which are harmful to the people and of course, the distribution and retail. <coughs> Then if you look at uh, the sources, the licensiers and media and Chinese suppliers and toy clusters, they become very important because uh, uh, the it is a low cost item and it the, the supply chain is long. In other words, in other words, the, they have to, the toys are made at various places in China and finally, they are shipped to, to the United States, uh, uh, particularly for seasons like Christmas and so on. And the toy clusters, clusters because all the raw materials and the and the uh, people talent is available for manufacture of uh, these uh, toys and human financial resources and uh, R and D uh, standards, R and D and standards. You know there is research and development for manufacture of this one and also there is standard setting. You see what happened, one thing that happens in low cost manufacturing when lot of institutions are involved they, they and they contribute towards the uh, uh, towards the uh, the product uh, the safety and also uh, the the quality of the product then standards become important and it is also important that the standards should be whatever the standards be should be understood by all the players so, in other words, what is the kind of paint you use, how long you are going to dry, what is the kind of hair, what is the color of the hair, what kind of dye you are going to use. All these are important because these are they look a natural colors, but they are artificial colors and they could be dangerous. <coughs> and if you look at uh, the institutions, uh, then there is a Chinese and US governments and regulators. And we are going to see particularly for uh, this manufacturing, there is the Chinese uh, Manufacturing Authority, which actually clears uh, both the export and import and so on. And similarly, similar thing in the US, and qu quality control and environmental issues that are concerned about this, big retailers, customers and licensiers. So, big retailers like uh, like Walmart, uh, Tesco and others, they control, they put the price pressures. And of course, there is the, the forward logistics that is the movement of the material from uh, uh, China to United States uh, or from various countries one part to the other and also whenever there is a product recall because the product recalls are important and every company which is involved with either food or toys or, or for, for that matter any anything where it may go wrong the, pro the, the product recall becomes a big issue. And you should have the reverse logistics for product recalls in place and most companies do not have this kind of capability. We will go to that. Quality control and inspections. Now, the big question is whether you are going to inspect at every stage or you are going to inspect the final quality product. These are all the issues that one and of course, retailers and promotions and parents. Parents play a big role because they are the ones who are going to buy it for the, for the children and parents should be advised to look at the safety features of any particular toys, but parents usually go by brand. So, somebody else children has the has a Barbie doll. So, they, they go for the Barbie doll irrespective of whether it is safe, it is a new design, whether the design is correct or not. People do not inspect this. 
So, this is the kind of um, the ecosystem that we have. Once you have the map of the ecosystem like this, you can see when something goes wrong, <coughs> who is responsible for what. In other words, for example, when there is the, when there is a paint uh, the problem, then you can immediately uh, put the blame on Chinese suppliers, on the regulators who allowed it and also uh, the quality control and inspections. So, but on the other hand more positively if you want to improve the quality of the products then you should inspect the suppliers, you should develop the standards, you should also have the quality control and inspectors and also inform the regulatory authorities. But should something happen then you should have the product recall which is the reverse logistics in place. So, what is the supply chain? I mean here the metal supply chain is uh, metals first Barbie dolls were produced in Japan in 1959 and uh, from Japan it has moved to China <coughs> nowadays. Metal has its own production facilities and maintain tight control to address the possibility of trademark infringement because the design of the tolls, uh, the, the toys is trademarked. So, it is like a patent and it cannot be infringed then people can go to court. And metal inspected materials when they arrived at the factory door and suppliers were closely monitored for problems such as lead based paint and vendors were terminated for violations. So, you can see that uh, it is on, on, on board with various quality control. Metal developed about 5000 new toys, new toys each year and new toys were produced in small batches for approval. When full scale production became toys are inspected periodically. I think you should notice that during the, uh, the while the inspection of the materials and other things happen in this, when the full scale production happens the toys are inspected periodically. So, this is when one has to be extremely careful when there is a full, full scale uh, production and there is a lot of demand for toys that is when the first year, second year, third year suppliers because oh, they do not have the material they buy a low, car, low, low standard materials. And metal subcontracts to 30 to 50 vendors to produce non core products and also components of core products such as fabrication painting of eyeballs for certain dolls. So, the toy production in China in 2007 about 80 percent of the world's toys production were made in China and nearly 80 percent of the toys coming to US were made in China. And metal produced about 65 percent of its toys in China and most of these toys were produced in about 5000 factories located in Gunjong district uh, province owned by Hong Kong entrepreneurs. And toy distribution had evolved from specialty retailers to uh, mass market companies such as Walmart who pressured suppliers to drive down the cost. Earlier there used to be toys or us kind of uh, uh, shops, but now these toys are available in almost every big retail store. Metal had moved manufacturing to China in the 1980s. So, now how does uh, uh, metal handle the supplier selection in this and what does it monitor? So, factories and metal supply chain should procure paint and other materials from certified suppliers and follow corporate sta uh, safety standards. I mean basically this is the standard that uh, that they tell everybody metal did not price pressure suppliers particularly on paint related products. And when they subcontracted with other suppliers who might further subcontract to other suppliers for parts or materials. So, basically this is a multi tier supply chain 
basically where you have not only tier 1 suppliers, you have tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 and so on and finally ends up with raw materials like paint uh, uh, and dyes and so on. So, Forrest is a company that was uh, making a doll, might subcontract certain processes such as painting the eyes to another company, that company might obtain the paint from still another supplier. So, the point is that when you have a low cost product like a doll and you have a multi tier supply chain and the risk come can emanate from any one of these suppliers and just because it is a multi tier the, the, the lower the lower rank suppliers are more prone to adulteration and use low cost materials, low quality materials than the higher this one. A they may they may not be unaware and B they are being supplied by somebody else and then they just do it because of the cost pressures. So, metal prohibited some contractors using multiple layers of additional suppliers. Metal required vendors to notify the company of all subcontract deals with the option to inspect them. So, what metal was trying to do is basically to it is aware of the of the uh, lead poisoning or uh, poison paint which children what happens is if the hands of a particular doll or the eyes of a doll are painted with lead and if the lead is content is high when the chain child puts the, the doll the hand or the leg or the this one or licks the, the doll then the child gets infected with the lead content lead paint which may lead to death. So, this is this is the kind of uh, this one that that is why these people are aware of these kind of dangers and so they want to put pressure on their suppliers by having inspections. And Metal had 200 employees uh, based in Hong Kong whose sole responsibility was training and supervising these signing contracts. Now, this is where if the if the product recalls had to happen that means if there is lead poisoning somewhere or some other thing happens then these 200 employees are responsible. Now, how seriously these people take their job is is on the question because when things happen. And metal was considered to be the best role model for how to operate prudently in China. There is a New York Times article just around 2006 putting metal at the top of the world in terms of how to handle the as a role model for having a uh, uh, operate prudently in China. Now, because it is known that uh, in China there are lots of problems associated with A intellectual property, B duplication of these materials by imitation because when they are making the dolls they can make the dolls for somebody else and C for low quality use of low quality products. So, for all these reasons people have to be extremely careful and metal being a low cost uh, product manufacturer is na naturally has to be uh, has to be careful about this and metal was basically was given the role model for prudently operating in China. Retailer effect on toy manufacturers, what is the retailer effect? The retail effect on toys had consolidated, uh, retail market has consolidated and negotiating power of large retailers such as Walmart, Target, Toys R Us uh, increased that is 41 percent of metal metals 2007 sales were through these people. So, naturally when they are procuring from large quantities and they had they are putting things on sale Christmas sale, fall sale and so on and they basically have to put pressure on the cost. So, metal and its competitors have to continuously reduce prices in order to meet the demands of the big retailers. 
Now, the ones who decrease the prices are like, like increasing the salary of the employees. It increases year by year because their increment increases. And similarly, the price, once uh, it, it comes down, it decreases year by year. So, this puts pressure on metal suppliers to continuously cost cost because metal, I mean metal, the, the retailers demand metal and metal puts pressure on, on their suppliers. There were also pressures like because it's a, it's a global uh, FIR, global supply chain, yuan which is the chain in currency, it appreciated and tax and other labor cost increases etc. So, there is a labor cost increase. You are appreciated, which means more dollars and pushing costs higher with little room for cuts. And in this cost sensitive uh, economic environment, there was little, little incentive for Chinese factories to increase the, their investments in quality programs or product testing. Now, one thing that happens in most companies including organizations uh, uh, is that whenever there is a cost and time pressure, the first thing they are going to cut is the quality checkups and the product reviews. That they think the employees can do it by themselves. So, that is what that is what uh, these, uh, these people have done. Companies relied on testing samples. Once production started, companies did not test their raw materials even though suppliers were known to substitute less expensive materials. So, what happens is the fundamental principles that metal used to follow inspect the raw materials when they come to the factory at the factory door and you inspect the materials when they go out of the factory door. This particular thing is missed once the production has started and they are trying sample inspection of the final products. That means, they take 1 percent of the final products and they inspect them. So, this is where because of the price pressure or whatever, they are going to of course, metal has a brand name. It could have refused saying that look, I cannot supply it at this, uh, this one, I mean Walmart or whoever. Uh, target has to listen to this because the toys is a popular item with the children. So, the sales of the toys is not because of, of Walmart, but it is because of uh, of metal or the brand brands like metal and so on. So, they could have negotiated well with the, with the target, but most people fall to the price pressures of the big retailers because there is always the big retailers can always get non-brand products from other contract manufacturers and put their labels. The same Barbie doll can be manufactured somewhere else without all these standards and all that and it could probably be cheaper. And Walmart or somebody can can uh, source from those, those areas. So, to prevent all that these branded uh, suppliers or branded manufacturers, they try to reduce the prices uh, for, for these branded uh, retailers. So, what are the resources that we see in the resources there? Resources are the media and licensors, the suppliers of course, the suppliers who are coming from China and so on, testing and inspection design and R&D. Now, this design of the of the products which are in this particular case metal has toys is done at metal headquarters may be located in Hong Kong, may be located in in in, uh, in, uh, in the United States and there is an R&D associated with this. Now, this R&D is basically sourcing what kind of what kind of uh, soy, toys are selling, what are the new toys, they go and go to the brands like Walt Disney and others, what they are doing, what kind of toys and so on. So, but the design of these toys, you know carefully, we you know the toys which, which clap and make sound, the toys uh, 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 which run, these kind of toys, they require uh, the batteries, they require magnets and so on. So, 
basically these designs have to be uh, design of the products and the materials uh, has to be done uh, by some organization. So, these resources are usually metal owned. Most of these people have the brand in their designs and the looks. So, what are the regulations in this? The regulations if you look at administration of quality supervision inspection and quarantine. AQSIC is the Chinese top quality control agency. Uh, it has all around 40,000 employees uh, which regulate the, uh, the products uh, uh, that go out of China. China enforced a nationwide product quality licensing system requiring official inspections of toys made for export. Companies exporting toys are required to apply for quality licensing. So, in other words the companies have to say that look we are going to supply only quality products. They are licensed to export only under that kind of promise. In addition of course, there are inspectors who are inspecting and of course, one knows in China if you are caught then you will have problems. The Gantang district uh, import export inspection and quarantine bureau keeps records of potentially dangerous materials and paints in addition to checking finished products. So, the sale and use of potentially dangerous materials like lead, uh, uh, lead infected paints and so on is uh, they keep a track of this. So, basically this particular agency this bureau has knowledge of who is producing these, these materials and who is using them and how much and for what purpose. So, it looks like in China this particular because they are aware of these problems and once the, there is problem then the China's name gets tarnished. For that reason they, they seem to be highly careful about regulating these issues particularly in terms of the low cost products like the toys and leather goods and so on. Under the agreement signed by US Consumer Product Safety Commission CPSC and AQSIC, the use of lead paint in toys was prohibited. So, you cannot use lead paint in toys. The agreement also included plans to improve education of the Chinese suppliers about US safety standards, share information between US and China and increase inspections in China. So, the point I am making here is that if you look at the regulations, their regulations are there, but if things happen in spite of the regulations that is the suppliers violate and if you have a bad design then there is nothing regulator can do. All the regulator can regulate is about it does not test your toys, the design is yours, but when you manufacture this particular toy in a particular this one it ensures that the quality of the products that are used in these toys. So, what about the delivery services? Forward logistics and product recalls, <coughs> the forward logistics is of course, uh, is the usual from it goes from China to Hong Kong and from Hong Kong or Shanghai or or Hong Kong they are shipped to the United States. But, uh, there are also promotions and of course, the parents are the ones who are going to buy the toys for the kids and helping the suppliers educating and supporting them. So, that is another part of the delivery services because after all uh, the forward logistics is forwarding something bad. So, you should tell all the suppliers not to this one. Testing quality control inspections for safety and Mattel had 200 employees based in Hong Kong whose sole responsibility is training and supervising Chinese this one. So, as far as delivery service uh, delivery services is concerned of course, there are forward logistics that there and uh, to the, uh, the big retail stores like uh, Walmart. Uh, target and others 
and of course there are promotions uh, and uh, checking and quality control and all those. So, if you when we looked at the ecosystem for this, we have looked at the supply chain, we have looked at the regulations, we have looked at the resources, we have looked at the delivery services. So, why did the product recalls happen? In other words, we are talking of a situation when we looked at the ecosystem because it is, a, it is a toy and the case is is we are looking at the safety of this product recalls. We emphasized that part or those parts where the echoes of where of the ecosystem where the safety is guaranteed. So it is not as though you can find fault with uh, with any of these ecosystem parameters they seem to be doing well. So the reasons for toy recalls are design problems. <coughs> now, this is a general one in detachment of loose small parts. In other words, if there is a hand and the hand can come out and if there is a magnet inside the magnet can come out small powerful, uh, powerful magnets dislodged from toys and swallowed by children. And that goes into the intestines and then you know things can happen. And there could be manufacturing problems, use of paint with lead levels exceeding 0 0.06 percent. And there is product misuse. You know, after all, the products are being used by, by the children. So, they are supposed to play with the toys, but they may beat the toys, they may take a, take a stick and then beat the toys or they, they can take the toys and beat it on the ground. So, the children often find creative ways to play causing detachment of parts and misuse of swallowing. They can lick it, they can swallow it and so on. So, when you are designing a particular product, if you have problems with the design, you should take who is using it. I mean, who is your potential user, who is your customer and the designs have to be customer sensitive. That is where I think the most of the problems come from the toys and reasons for toy recalls design problems use of small powerful magnets in small children's toys. Magnets <coughs> not encased properly due to deficient designs and could become dislodged and swallowed by children. The ingested magnets would bind together across intestinal folds continuously perforating the intestine causing serious injury or death. The first death for this cause was reported in 2005. And parts could break off toys and ca cause choking in the infants. And designers should ensure that toys intended for very young children did not have loose small parts and that any part attached to the toys such as roses, eyes, of stuffed animals or buttons could not be detached. What are the manufacturing problems in this? One recurrent problem is the use of lead paint. Lead was commonly used as paint in 1970s. Paint with lead levels exceeding 0.6 were banned in the US for residential and consumer use. The companies manufacturing in China put processes in place to prevent the use of lead paint on their products. There were many possible reasons for use of lead paints. Why do people use lead paint? Paint with lead costs 30 to 60 percent, 30 to 60 percent less pay, less than paint with lead, than without lead. Use of unapproved suppliers falsified certification of documents by suppliers. You know, you can, how do you know the, the this one, I mean the, the supplier is going to supply from somebody saying that it is a good paint, it has less than uh, 0 0.06 percent, uh, then that is, that happens. So, what about the product uh, misuse? Children often find creative ways to play that were not anticipated by the designers cards that could wrap around the child's neck 
features in which child's head could get stuck and potentially cause strangulation. So, let us look at the uh, metal 2007, what happened there. On August 2nd, 2007, metal announced a voluntary recall of Fisher Price products sold from May to August 2007. On August 14th, Metal issued a second voluntary call involving 436,000 toys worldwide, 253,000 of which were in the US. More recalls on September 4th. The reason toys were produced using a non approved paint pigment containing lead. That was the reason that was given by. metal and in fact it was not metal but uh, from August onwards August 2000 onwards there were media this one I mean some of these companies were saying that it is the lead paint and Chinese uh, suppliers were ba banned and all that. But on September 21st metal announced that vast majority of the recall toys 17.4 million had been due to loose magnets that is because of de de defective designs while a much smaller number 2.2 million were related to manufacturing defects excessive lead. So, the fact is of course that <coughs> both are at faulty metal design was not good because it has or it has designs which are unsafe for kids and also it has parts which are loose and particularly those parts were magnets and the children can swallow the magnets and that could be dangerous for them. And the other, other one is 2.2 million dolls, dolls were had manufacturing has excessive lead. So, how do you do the risk management? Let us come to uh, this issue here. In other words, it is a general issue in outsource manufacturing. So, prototype testing for design values. Would this be safe? Would this toys be safe? Does it have small parts, sharp edges, long strings, holes, gaps, uses or chemicals that may be harmful? Would the toy be holed up in the use of abuse or misuse? Does this toy break easily? If so, does it generate small parts, sharp edges, long strings, etc.? What are the most unexpected ways in which a child can play? Does the fact that testers colleagues made the design and prototype influence the error reporting? Testers colleague made the design and prototype influence the error reporting are the test reports taken seriously. So, basically there are the, 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 the issue goes all the way from designers to the people who test it and who certify it and so on. This is at metal. And metal must ensure that its multi-tier supply chain meets its standards. As the supply chain adds levels, it becomes increasingly impossible to inspect the lower tires. These companies work with the thin margins and the lack of size and financial pressures to invest in quality improvements. It is essential that masters first sale suppliers recognize the importance of product safety and integrity and their performance be consistent with metals expectation. The recognition would then need be passed on to each successive tier of the supplier. In fact, when the product recall happened, the companies that were involved with the metal, they are very good companies and metal had a very long standing relationship with them. But the, the, the fact of the matter is their company, those companies have subcontracted to somebody who basically had this problem. So, a third party supply chain monitor may also be considered. Now, here see the, the point is can you have an orchestrator who could who could do the entire monitoring for you a third party and where should he be placed 
and what should he monitor? Is the RU monitoring the? Is it usually the orchestrator monitor the product manufacture and delivery to the suppliers? This is like Li and Fang and others. But here we are we are looking at monitoring the quality control. So of various suppliers. So this is a part of the procurement of this. So you should you should not only the monitor the third party should not only know the the quality product for each of these products how they can be diluted or how can they can be poisoned and who are the suppliers where they are manufactured what is the relationship between the tiers of suppliers between them are they in the same area. So, this is the kind of country knowledge on the on the village on the town knowledge that is needed by the orchestrator. So, once that is needed then when you are going towards to, to a particular uh, to a particular manufacturer or uh, uh, or a supplier then you can uh, uh, you can basically caution him saying that look you are you are you are in the vicinity of this particular light high light paint so if you use it then you will have problems if you have any problems if you cannot procure please tell us we will procure it for you so this is the kind of uh, uh, mentorship that is needed here. So, product recalls always happens. <coughs> that is because whenever there is a sale, there is a possibility of recall. Risk analysis of possible happenings on design, manufacturing, product use, sale use, and actions in each case, and appropriate governance structure should be in place for product recalls. Then, from Red Cross, media advertising information through the retailers and so on. So, to, to conclude this in this we have talking about the multi-tier supply chain partner selection and risk management and there are big issues multi-tier supplier partner selection as well as multi-tier risk management are big issues in globally dispersed supply chains. I mean there are issues in any outsourced supply chain whether it is local or global. It is more glo global in the sense you know if you are everybody is in the United States, everybody is from the same country then everybody is aware of the local laws. The governing agency, the controlling agency is the same the cost pressures will not be there because everybody is at the same same page. But here when you are outsourcing and people are from different countries then the risk management becomes an issue and also if it is a low cost product then it becomes much more. Design for manufacturing, zero defect production, customer safety are all hallmarks of manufacturing in the 70s. So, when people were talking of vertically integrated manufacturing, then you know people were talking of design for manufacturing, zero defect production, customer safety and so on. These are all the, the are taken for given, but what happened in globally dispersed manufacturing? So, if since everybody is on the in the same 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 country and the same page they are all educated to for zero defect production design for manufacturing and all the customer safety and all that. But when these are dispersed the same thing does not happen. Managing accountability in long global supply chains is a difficult challenge and particularly this becomes much more difficult. It becomes much more difficult when the product that is involved is low cost like toys or like food or anything that is low cost about 10, 15 dollars and also it is marketed through big retailers. Whatever may be brand when it is marketed through big retailers and all that there is lot of cost, press, cost pressures and the cost pressures they go down the chain to from the retailers to the manufacturers to the suppliers and so on and suppliers do not want to lose the uh, uh, lose the market or the order and they try to do 
other things like adulteration like contamination or uh, source it from somebody who is cheap and use cheaper products and so on. So, how do long dispersed supply chains ensure the above issues are not compromised? In other words, inspections, of course, they cost a lot of money and there is always corruption in the inspections. Communications, telling everybody what should be and of course, supply chain visibility. Now, supply chain visibility has problems because the low cost suppliers, particularly tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 and so on, they may not be available on the internet and they may not be, they may not have uh, this kind of visibility that they need. And of course, collaboration incentives of low cost, this one, this MX way and what else. So, this is, there are, there are issues here about, about this. Of course, one fundamental thing is, why are you manufacturing these products using these? Why should a toy should have a paint at all when you know? In other words, one thing that designers could consider is to remove all the products which are all the uh, elements in the design which could be, why should you use magnets in this? So, there are, there are several ways in which one can, one can look at it. It depends on the product, it depends on the country, it depends on, on various issues. So, that is where we stop and then we will see it later. What governance structure do you suggest for low product supply chains, this MX way and so on? 